Welcome to Lab 12, your last lab for Physics 187. In this final lab, we'll take our, our next step in determining the distances to, really, to objects that are really quite far away from us. And to determine these distances, we're going to use a, an observation that was made by Edwin Hubble, that is, most galaxies appear to be moving away from us. And as he measured the recessional speeds of these galaxies that were moving away from us, and also measured the distances to those galaxies using perhaps the bright Cepheid variables that were visible in those galaxies, he found that there was actually a relationship between how fast these galaxies were moving and how far away these galaxies were. And it was a linear relationship. And so if we make a plot of the speed of the galaxies versus the distance, we can come up with a straight line representation for those galaxies. And what that then allows us to do right, is if we can find the slope of this line, a straight line can be written as a constant times the independent variable, right? So this is just like writing y is equal to m times x. For this particular set of, of data points, what we do is we write the speed is equal to a constant times the distance and the constant of proportionality is called Hubble's constant. For this particular lab, we are going to measure the speed in kilometers per second, and we are going to measure the distance in millions of light years. The distance will have been measured um, for you already. What you will be specifically trying to find for these galaxies is their speed. Let's go ahead and take a look at what this lab will look like. So if you open up the Hubble constant, you will see a view of the sky that should give you 10 galaxies. Um, you'll have some spirals, you may have an elliptical, you'll have a bunch of stars. The, the galaxies that, the, the objects that are galaxies should be pretty obvious. If you're not sure, clicking on them, uh, clicking on a galaxy will give you the hydrogen spectra for that galaxy. So let me go ahead and pick one of these spiral galaxies here that we're seeing edge on. If I click on that galaxy, actually if I just hover over that galaxy, what I will get is I will be told that this is actually galaxy number one and it is 969 million light years away from us. I'll want to make sure I record that distance and remember that this is galaxy number one. And then again you can see here I have the hydrogen um, spectral lines for this particular galaxy. And we can see that they're redshifted. We know we can go ahead and we can find the spectral lines. If I click on one of those particular spectral lines, it will tell me the wavelength, 434 nanometers. It will give me the, sh the original line right here and it will give me the Doppler shifted line right here. We will find the speed like we always do by counting the number of squares, one, two, and here's the relative, the, the reference line, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. About 10.5 squares is the Doppler shift for this violet line. I would record that and I would enter that into my spreadsheet. If I click back on the green line, notice this galaxy is moving so fast that I can't actually see the Doppler shift for the green line on that scale. If that happens, what you should do is click on the shorter violet line, 410 nanometers, and count the shift for that shorter violet line, which in this case is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, about 9.9 .9 squares. For each galaxy where it's possible, you should collect the Doppler shifts for two of the lines. The spreadsheet is set up to assume that you will collect the Doppler shift for the longer purple line of 434 nanometers and the green line of 486 nanometers. We'll go to the spreadsheet in just a second and talk about what happens if either of those lines are missing. You'll get the distance here. Someone's already measured that distance for you. 
and then you'll get the Doppler shift by clicking on the spectrum and counting the number of squares. Now let's take a quick look at what the spreadsheet for this particular lab will look like. Okay. So, Galaxy 1, I have the number of squares for purple, which I think was about 10.5 if I can remember that right. I would enter that in there. Sorry to be moving back and forth so much, but... Okay. Now, remember, for this particular case, I did not have a green line. So for this particular one, what I need to do is I need to change this particular line to 410. And then I would enter the number of squares I found for that one. And notice what happens. It finds the relative Doppler shift. It finds the average value of that Doppler shift. And then it calculates the speed in kilometers per second. The way we've been calculating the speed using the Doppler shift all semester is we take that average Doppler shift, we multiply by the speed of light, and that will give us the speed of the object. I would then transfer the data that I've collected to this table over here, where I take the galaxy and enter its distance and enter its speed, and I just calculate. For the remaining 10 galaxies, you can just simply copy this box right here and paste it down eight more times so that you have the ability to calculate these values for all ten of the galaxies. If between now and um, then when you actually access this lab you happen to find all ten galaxies already listed there, that would have been because I went in and decided to do that copy and paste. Once you have all of your data collected for these 10 galaxies, then you would create a graph. The lab explains to you how you would create the graph. And once you have these points plotted in Excel, Excel can find the line that best represents those points. And just simply by looking at the equation of the line, you can get the value for this constant. Now there's one fortuitous benefit for having calculated Hubble's constant. And we can think about this in terms of the movement of the galaxies. If the galaxies are moving away from us, we can think about them running in reverse, and at some point in time, these galaxies may have all started very close together. And what the Hubble constant actually gives us, if we look at the value for this constant, it actually has units of inverse time. And so the Hubble constant is actually related to the age of the universe. And so now once we've found the Hubble constant, we can actually figure out how old the universe would be, how long these galaxies have been expanding away from each other. That's quite easy. Um, we measured the speed in kilometers per second, and we measured the distance in light years. If we had measured the speed in kilometers per second and the distance in kilometers, we wouldn't have to have this, this odd equation. But because we measured the distance and the speed in different units, we need a conversion factor for us. To find the age of the universe, all you do is you take 300.3 divided by the value of this Hubble constant, and you will get the age of the universe in billions of light years. Let's go back to virtual astronomy for just a second and look at what you may be asked to check. You can check your galactic data. So for galaxy number one, what you can do is you can check the Doppler shift of the 410 and the Doppler shift of the 434. Remember, this is not the number of squares or the fractional Doppler shift. It's the actual change in wavelength. You wouldn't be able to check it for 486 or 656 because those lines weren't, weren't visible. And in fact, for each of the galaxies that you, you measure, you only need to check the Doppler shift for two of the wavelengths. Or if only one wavelength is visible, you'd only change it for one, chart, check it for one of the wavelengths. Um, I don't need the screenshots for these. This is just a check for you as you do a couple of galaxies to check that you're actually doing the calculation right and making the measurements properly to check that your recession speed is actually working. I would ask you to put one of these screenshots for one particular galaxy into your lab report 
but I don't need to see it for all 10 of the galaxies. The important check your answer feature that you will need to provide with your lab is actually check your Hubble constant. Okay. And so the Hubble constant will be the value for the slope of the line. The age of the universe will be the calculation you will get by taking 300.3 and dividing by the value of the Hubble constant. And then this is just why you think um, the value might not be quite right. So this is actually a pretty impressive way to end the semester. As we look at this last lab, what the Hubble constant allows us to do is it allows us to find the distance to pretty much any object we can see. And the second thing it allows us to do, it actually allows us to give us, to determine an approximate age for the universe. So that's a pretty impressive thing you've accomplished with this particular lab. An absolute distant measurement to anything we can determine and a way of estimating the age of the universe. I hope you've had a good semester. Good luck with the lab. If you have any questions, please email me.